Welcome back to the Haunted Heart Podcast. We are your hosts, Katie. And Kenny. And we are here for an exciting week. We're here We're here with you. Yes. On that feed. Every it's, week. It's Wednesday. You know what's up. It's Witch Wednesday. Witch Wednesday. Where y'all at? Wonder Bread Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, hmm. Coming at Walmart you. Wednesday. Wal- <laughs> Walmart Wednesday. Walmart Wednesday. Mm-hmm. I usually do uh, Walmart Saturdays. Interesting. Yeah. That's different. Early. Early in the morning. Early Cause morning. Because they, they be stocking late on Friday night. <laughs> so you go early in the morning on what, Saturday, you can get all your produce. Wouldn't know anything about that. Um, God, yeah. The last time I was at Walmart, you know, they've got those little, those people that are with their little iPads and they're like ticking the people coming in and out of Walmart. I haven't seen that one time. Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah so are that's they? what they have. Or at least the Walmarts that I have personally patroned. <laughs> Uh, they we go to the same Walmart though. <laughs> well, they have the um, they have the little uh, what do you call it? the little gates, the little metal uh-huh. things that make you feel like you're at Six Flags, uh, like trying to wait. In they line. do have those outside. That so, annoys me. Yeah, they have those up, and um, so they have a person there with a little iPad, and that little person just like, hits a button on the iPad every time someone comes in or out. I'm concerned that I've never seen this because I've been going, I mean, I don't go super regularly, but I have been several times during the quarantine. And maybe my like little person with the iPad is just fucking maybe they're loafing break. off. Yeah, because I just walk <laughs> right in that bitch. I mean, I see the metal, like maybe I just go at weirdly not busy times. I don't know, man, but I just, it like, I'm just sitting there and I'm thinking like, damn, what if I like, fucked up account and, and like my anxiety could never it's your, it's your fault could never i like forget and i'm like uh 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 covid 19 is your fault did i fuck up <laughs> nah i i feel like uh and then I'm, I'm very concerned that i've never seen this now now i'm just like low-key terrified now she's gonna head straight we're gonna just stop mm. the podcast right now and we're gonna go live to the walmart <laughs> Live the from the Walmart, the Haunted Heart <laughs> Podcast. Yeah, and then the last time I was there, I I made my purchases and went to the went to the exit. The door would not open, and I stood there for nearly thirty <laughs> seconds. And I realized, damn, I've got to go. It's only one now, not two. One one entrance. You had to go to the oh, other end. To the other end. I had yeah. to go to the other yeah. end, and I'm oh, like, oh, see, I mm. always go out that end anyway. Yeah, about and that. I don't know. There was a man. He stared at me like, "What are you doing?" And I'm like, oh. Okay. Judgment. Yeah. There's lots of judgment oh, at the that's Walmart. That's fun. Well. But we're not here to talk about Walmart. This isn't not. the... Uh, it's the, not the Walmart podcast. It's not the Walmart Although podcast. Although that sounds like a fucking incredible idea. Fucking spit off, man. Yeah, definitely going to get sued, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're pretty... The, what are they? The Waltons? No, the fucking... Uh, Wal- ah, shit. What's their name? I think they're the Waltons. Walbergs? Are they? Not Walbergs. What? Not Walbergs. Mr. and Mrs. Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Definitely and, yeah. Sue. Mr. and Mrs. Walmart, the Walmart family. Um, please don't sue us. Please don't. We're just here to talk about spooky shit. Just but here. first, yes. We're here to welcome new members to our family. New members to the family. Uh, we love it. We always have space at the table for new members of the family. Six feet apart though. Six feet apart. For right now. But not in our heart. In our heart, we can be we can be snugged up on each other as close as we want. Snugged up, cuddled up, big spoon and little spoons abound. Yeah, would you want to be big spoon or little spoon? Like personally? Yeah. Hmm. I like. It just depends. It really depends. I feel like any time I've ever napped with you. You've always been big spoon, but I am a little spoon uh, hog. It depends. So like, <laughs> I, I like to start out as big spoon, uh-huh. but then go to sleep as little spoon. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, I could see that. 
Well. Or starfish. Mm. You normally just starfish. <laughs> that too. <laughs> that too. That too. Uh, so I believe, like you said, we've got some new members that we need to introduce. We need to get this candle lit for them because do, they are in this... desperate need of some fucking uh, health, wealth, happiness, goodwill, good intentions. I mean, aren't we all, baby? All of it. Aren't we all? I'll kick us off. Okay. Uh, so I am going to be invoking our new cannibal cult member, Amber A. And we also have Virginia, who has joined us as a member of our Stay Spooky Squad. Squad. Fabulous, and the candles are lit beside our nightstands with care, Mm -hmm. with hopes that, uh, I don't know, I was, I was going to try to riff on Christmas and then it just like, my brain just like stopped functioning. With hopes that the midnight man will soon be there There to rip out our intestines. Yes, that's the one. (laughs) That's the one. That Uh, is the one. I, by the way, whoops, I'm pretty sure. Oh, you're smacking the nightstand. Damn. Or not the nightstand, the mic stand today. I I did smack the nightstand. And guess what? (laughs) I'm not going to edit that out because I don't give a fuck. No. Um, What was I going to say? Oh, yes. The Midnight Man. I think I saw. mm, I think we talked about that when we did that episode. I was going to say, I think there was a movie. The movie? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> the movie's a, a whole thing. I know. Is we that on Shudder? About that. Mm. We should check and see if it's on Shudder. Maybe. No, there was something. Maybe. I guess it was the movie. It was something that I remember seeing like within the last week. And I was like, oh, that's about the Midnight Man. And I'm going to assume that it was a movie. Yeah. But huh. I don't know why it's maybe it was out actually the Midnight Man coming. To maybe I did. Maybe I actually, I actually saw the Midnight Man and actually had, you know, had some tea. Uh, sat down, had great conversation. Yeah, uh, he's and, a he's a lovely conversationalist. And then what is it? Yeah, I, you know, I put the thing in the box and then just buried it away and never looked at it ever again. <laughs> I think that's a mixture of two different things. But I'm I'm one. Maybe the Midnight Man would be great. I don't know. He knocked offering. on a door. I knocked on the door. And, and you then know, he was and just then was reaching the, for them guts. There. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've had that encounter as Woo! well. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, so um, I don't think we actually finished our Patreon (laughs) vacation. We didn't. Anyway, candles are lit. They're beside our nightstands. We're sending you love and uh, health, wealth, and happiness. Um, They'll burn beside our mic stands that Kenny is going to hit several more times throughout Mm. this episode. I just feel it. Um, (laughs) They'll be burning beside our mic stands throughout the end of the episode, but forever and always. In our dark, dark hearts. Dark, and of dark, course, dark, dark if you would like an invocation similar to the one that we just had for Amber and Virginia, you can check us out on patreon.com slash the haunted heart. Um, we do invocations for every new Patreon member who decides to support the show. But as always, we caution you guys to make sure, especially in the crazy times that we are living in, that you are taking care of yourselves and your families first. We have been like overwhelmed by the generosity that you guys have had, even you know, into crazy quarantine times. Mm-hmm. Um, but just make sure you're taking care of yourselves because we love you. We want you to be okay. Okay. I want you to be all right. Be all right. Okay. So, are we ready to dig in to this week's? There's the yee truck. You know what that means. I'm gonna tell you what. Look, he was a little bit late, but you know the yee truck means it's time to start the show. Look. He coming back. There he is. He's making God, it up. To it's us. a romance. It's a <laughs> romance. At this Literally point. every fucking time. <laughs> it's poetry. We don't even. I, the we're not even recording like right next to a major fucking road. It's, no. it's literally just a normal road. And not even in like you know places that would typically have big souped up yee trucks. Oh, like, they're here. I know. It's they're just here. so weird to me. I don't understand. But the thing is, they're is around. that it's like literally every time we record. 
I like to think it's the same man. It's there always. It's our version of the Midnight Man, the podcast man. (laughs) He's just there always. And I don't understand because it doesn't matter if we record earlier in the evening. He's there. If we record later in the evening, it's there. If we fucking record at 3.30 in the morning, it's it's fucking there. I'm like, what? What are you doing? I feel like he has some kind of like homing device on us. And he just knows when we light these fucking candles, he's like, it's my time to shine. It's time. He's Bless summoned. him. Maybe we can. Maybe we can you know get what? him in for an interview. <laughs> I bet he had a great Fourth of July. He probably fucking did. <laughs> Bless. Bless up. Get him in for an interview, yeah. And then, like the whole time, he just actually sits there and you ask him a question. And he just goes, <laughs> and that's his actual he just, voice. He just literally opens his mouth and that sound comes out. Holy shit! <laughs> fucking horror. Talk about your horror. <laughs> Woo. That would be too much. That'd be awesome. That would be too much. Anyway. Um, I, I I am uh, quite ready for a story. Quite as, ready. I'm quite ready for a story this evening. Uh, it's, you know, I, I did my time last week. <laughs> you did. I did my time. I pulled it. I did. Yeah. You can go back it and listen good. to it. It was fun. Um, And now it's my turn to sit like a bump on a log and just not think at all about anything at all. Yeah, and be I don't. Something. I don't know if this is gonna work out for you. Then God, I mean, I know, and it's always so weird because it's like it's a you story, and and that usually does, like you said, does not bode well for me because it tends to involve lots of like, just lots of like meta and like fucking yeah. Inception style bullshit, and I'm just. I think I think you'll be okay this week. You just lead me into an existential crisis. I think you'll be okay. Mostly, um, well, I'll let you decide for yourself. Okay, so. great, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> just just do that. Just you know what? Go ahead. Just do that. Open it up. Slap me in the face with it. Okay. All right, people. You've been in the Facebook group. And in email and commenting on Instagram and tweeting like champions. And I want you to know that we heard you. Have they? They have. For many, 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 many months. Mm. We heard you. You want to talk about cults. God. You love cults. They do love a cult. You are obsessed with cults. You have pictures of L. Ron Hubbard and Shoko Asahara and Marshall Applewhite plastered all over your walls and you listen to the Jonestown tapes every night before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. You people are obsessed with cults. And you're always wanting us to cover them and we dig that. So this week, Mama is going to give you what you want. And we are going to talk about a potential alleged supposed rumored cult. Potential alleged supposed rumored cult. Yes. Alleged is like the number one word for the episode today. So if you uh, just get used to me saying that word, because I'm going to say it a lot. Depending on how this turns out, this could be an alleged episode. Yes, this is allegedly, an alleged episode. Allegedly, it w- it was uploaded. Allegedly, this is an episode. Not saying yes. that it, it it may or may not be. Oh, I'm yes. concerned because in our history of like covering cults, mm-hmm. it's always been like cults are one of those things where it's always they're always so varied. Like they yes. are not. I mean. You know, people who like you can talk about people who join cults and it's a, there's a certain like mindset and formula that, you know, people who use to manipulate minds, you know, work with or whatever. But as far as like the details and like different things, like they're all so different. So it's interesting to me to learn about new cults. And we have went through what was that? Um, uh, you That Haley Heaven's shit. Gate. Heaven's Gate. Yeah. Again, maybe they had the right idea. Ooh. They're flying on that fucking comet right now. Maybe. We're all down here. Maybe. Um, and then we've been to, what was that one with the weird restaurant that was around here? They had a restaurant. Mm, you covered it a, a long time ago. A restaurant that was yes. around here? Yeah, you covered it. It was a cult? It was a cult, and it was like a religious cult, and they have a restaurant that's around here. It's in one of our earlier episodes. Wow, I'd love to listen to that episode. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot what it is, but they do. They have a restaurant. It's maybe in West Virginia. I don't know. But it's interesting what to just What the fuck is wrong with me? What see. cult was it? I don't remember. <gasps> fuck. You covered it, though. I think it was when I... Wow. I think it was... Mm, 
I don't remember, but I know. Interesting. It was an early mm. Well, if you know that episode, go ahead and <laughs> post it for me somewhere. Tag me in it. Um, tag us in it. At the Haunted Heart on Twitter. It's a diner. Uh, they had a diner. I fucking, this is ringing absolutely zero bells for me. Oh my God. You know, there's people, there are listeners that are screaming. It's right fine. Now. Here, p- tweet us at the Haunted Heart on Twitter or email me at the Haunted Heart Podcast at gmail.com. Let me know what that fucking episode was because I'd love to hear me tell that story again. <laughs> 12 tribes communities. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. The Yellow yeah, Deli. Yeah, yes, yes. The Yellow Deli. Oh, That's what it was. yeah, we have to go there. And uh, their menu was bomb. <laughs> that food be looking good. I don't know about them long denim skirts, but that food be looking good. Anyway, um, you know, long denim skirts are coming back. It's like I a know, 70s it's a whole thing. 90s gonna, thing Gen yeah, Z is doing right back. now. Yeah. You know, they're like, we're cool. And then I'm looking at like, mm. see, the hot. thing is, is that when I grew up, if I had dressed like that, I would have been bullied. Yes. I would have been bullied. Yes. Well, um, the the, the denim cool. skirt was, was really warm hot as in not attractive but like hot as in like warm as in like these mm. these thunder thighs of mine cannot breathe and they are chafing i was gonna um, say and it, it would chafe. be exactly the same now <laughs> so that's not gonna happen for me i imagine you would chafe yes yeah. in the denim skirt yeah yeah anyway well that was good that was a fun 12 tribes interesting trip down memory uh, that was so will. long ago fuck that was a long time mm-hmm. um I love yeah. that I can just go to Google and just type in cult diner. And then Boom. Bam. There research. it is. Research. Hashtag research. There it is. So, so yes. So we are going back into the realm of cults. You guys have been asking for it for a long time. We're going to talk about a cult today. Uh, only you know that I have oppositional defiance disorder and you know I'm going to have to mix it up a bit for you because I like... Um, So I love a good cult episode, but there's only so, I feel like there's like, there's lots of different interesting people in the world doing interesting things that allegedly could be uh, suspicious cult activity. Um, And I feel like there's a handful of cults that get covered all the time. And um, like every podcast covers Heaven's Gate. Um, (laughs) Us included. Including us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but my Heaven's Gate coverage is scattered and basically just me screaming. <laughs> so, right. but you get my you get my drift. Like every podcast covers Jonestown, every podcast covers not every, but there's there's a lot of coverage for those types of cults. Meanwhile, there's like lots of other bullshit that's happening on the periphery um, that I feel like doesn't get a lot of attention. So the group we're discussing today is very different from most of the cults that are traditionally brought up on podcasts like ours. Um, This group is almost entirely orchestrated online and as such is an alleged, yeah, again, get used to that word, internet cult. Mm, Okay. Which is interesting that you bring up Heaven's Gate because Heaven's Gate was supposedly the first internet cult, quote unquote. And what we're talking about today is kind of, it could be potentially seen as an extension of that. Like a a Heaven's Gate walked yeah so heaven's gate like 5.0 so that they could run yeah okay they they ran yes yes, <laughs> yes. um also another like really important difference is this is something that's like actively happening right now so it's not something that we're looking back on like heaven's gate um from you know the vantage point of knowing where the story quote unquote ends um this is something that's going on currently so we're going to be taking a look at um kind of like the story of the group, what some of the main beliefs are. And then we're going to um, look at a, an actual model for evaluation of um, like a model that has been built to help people understand what is a cult and what's not a cult. So that's kind of the approach that we're taking. So they're they're active now. Are you? They are. Are you trying to get us doxxed or some uh, shit? Like, <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm concerned. I'm just a little, I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned. I'm not actively worried but oh we'll see what are we, happens. are we passively worried Maybe a little bit okay yeah, well, all right a little bit i well, think it'd be fine okay um it's gonna be cool uh this week we're talking about teal swan the fuck and what? and her teal tribe oh oh you might remember 
Because we've actually talked about this a long time ago. We, I've been working on this one for a minute. Because I was literally about to say, this sounds like some hippy-dippy bullshit name that someone made of themselves. And then all of a sudden, it rem- like it just slapped me in the head. I'm like, wait, that is the name of some hippy-dippy bullshit. <laughs> Why, yes. <laughs> and it's precisely the hippy-dippy bullshit we're going to talk about Teal, today. Teal, as in T-E-A-L. T-E-A-L, yeah. I'm a little disappointed because I kind of want it to be like T I E L, and I don't know why. why. <laughs> I don't know because I think that you would expect it to be spelled like teal is in the color, uh-huh. and that you know with this type of person that we're about to discuss, it just seems like they would want to spell it differently. You know oh what I yeah, mean? yeah. Like teal, no, it's like T-I-E-L. the grammatical errors in their YouTube videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to get into so, it. Okay. Teal Swan. It also sounds like those fucking... Sorry, I'm just going to... I'm just going on <laughs> You're taking on this. It it strikes me as um, fucking Wet Seal. Yes. For some reason, every time yes. I think about Wet Seal. Wet Seal or like one of those really tacky like name generators where it's like... You know, yes. You take the, la- the color of your underwear plus yes. like... The name of your fucking spirit That fucking animal. name generator for Pottermore. <laughs> yeah. That gave me Rain Mugwump. <laughs> I it's forgot still a great about fucking that. Name. Rain Mugwump. Mugwump. Yeah, I still love that fucking name though. That's gonna be the name of my fucking cult when I reinvent myself. <laughs> Next right. week's intro. Welcome back to the Haunted Heart with your host Rain Mugwump. Rain Mugwump. <laughs> Yes. So if you've heard of Teal Swan, that's awesome. If you haven't heard of her, oh, well, don't you worry, darkling. <laughs> Just pull up a seat because your witch mother's dropping some knowledge for you this week. Okay. 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 So Teal Swan, also known as Mary Teal Bosworth, was born on June 16th, 1984 in Santa Fe, New Mexico, but she grew up in Logan, Utah, a city with a fairly high proportion of Mormons. Um, now, I don't mention that to be singling out the Mormons. Um, that's a whole nother, um, that's a whole nother podcast episode. <laughs> um, but that, that actually is, uh, the fact that she grew up in a city with a fairly high proportion of Mormons is actually uh, central to her story. Because Teal has said that her religious differences made her a target for bullying from an early age. Both Teal and her mother alleged that she began exhibiting signs of hypersensitivity to sound stimuli and reported alleged clairvoyance from an early age, which obviously didn't help the whole bullying thing much. Nah. So according to Teal, she was born with extrasensory abilities such as clairvoyance, clairsentience, and clairaudience. Unfortunately, Teal Swan's alleged oddities didn't end there. Teal has stated in numerous interviews that she was abused, raped, and psychologically tortured from the age of six onwards by a family friend. According to an article in Huffington Post Canada, as well as an ABC Today's Six on Your Side televised news story um, from 2014, I believe, Teal Teal claimed to be the victim of ritualistic abuse by a satanic cult for over a decade. The abuse, which was apparently aimed at curing her of her supposed extrasensory abilities, allegedly took place between uh, when she was between the ages of 6 and 19 and included some uh, pretty out there methods, shall we say. Why do we always have to blame the Satanists for everything? Oh, yeah. It was a satanic cult. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Um. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second. So, okay. so Teal's mother said in an interview for a 2017 documentary on the spiritual leader, alleged spiritual leader, called Open Shadow, that when Teal reached her teens, she attempted to take her own life, very sadly. Both parents agreed to take Teal to see a psychiatrist, but stated that none of the traditional Western therapeutic techniques worked. So then they turned to Eastern medicine, and rather than accepting that Teal was sick, they said the parents said that she was gifted when she was experiencing bouts of hypersensitivity. At the age of 19, Teal reportedly was able to reject the advances from the satanic cult who had allegedly abused her for over a decade and subsequently reported the abuse that she had endured to the police. Now, here's where things get really interesting. 
you guys have heard us talk about the satanic panic before on the show. Mm -hmm. You know that that refers to that period in the 80s and early 90s when the whole world was jonesing for some good old-fashioned satanic AF crimes. And we were all having wet dreams about these terrible misdeeds that were being committed by those dastardly little Satan worshippers. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. Except it never happened. Of all the crimes that were alleged to have been committed by Satanists during that time, not a single one of them were actually substantiated to have actually been committed by actual Satanists in honor of Satan. Because real Satanists are pretty much, by and large, nonviolent. Yes. It's not necessarily about, you know, fuck shit up. It's about do for you, take care of you and your people, fuck everybody else. Um, that's oversimplifying things significantly. But Satanists don't hurt children. <laughs> Satan, true Satanists don't hurt children. They don't hurt animals. They don't. They don't fuck with things like that. Um, but that's fine. I love it when I find a hidden overlap between topics that we've discussed on the show, and I actually found one while researching this story. So Teal Swan um has done these interviews, multiple interviews, where she alleges that she um, is a victim of this ritual abuse. She actually calls herself the quote-unquote poster child of ritual abuse. Hmm. She's a really interesting moniker to take. Hmm. Um, But she describes these things, and it has the color of of something from the satanic panic time period, right? So just to give you an example, she talks about one particular instance where she was uh, being abused and there was this dead body, there was this man that the Satanists had sacrificed to Satan and they opened his body up and they sewed her inside his corpse. They, they put her inside his corpse and sewed her up inside there and then they cut off the corpse's arms and legs and then left her there overnight. And it's like this crazy story. You can find the clips on YouTube if you're interested in hearing the interview, but it's this crazy story that is like totally out there. And as I was listening to it and doing the research for the show, it really just automatically kind of put me in mind of this satanic panic time period. So as I'm digging deeper um, into her allegations of ritual abuse by this supposed satanic cult, I found that Teal claimed that her memories of these events were initially repressed until a Salt Lake City-based therapist helped her to uncover these memories of her abuse. Interestingly enough, that therapist was Dr. Barbara Snow, one of the therapists who allegedly incited the satanic panic in the first place. Oh, okay. Yes. Connections, we're making them here. We've got pictures. We've got little bits of red string that we were do. tying I felt across. very much like that when I was researching. This. You, you felt like like I did in in my episode where I was looking for uh uh the the, the that family on Facebook. I was like yes. looking around. I'm like aha yes yes. It was very much like that, but which I thought was very interesting because um our episode that we talked about the satanic panic. Um, we talked about these therapists who were who would work with children who didn't necessarily have a background in child psychology, um, but they were working with these kids and they were talking to them about the experiences that they had um, allegedly gone through and they were kind of planting things as they went along, which is a terrible interviewing technique and it doesn't stand up nowadays, but that was sort of what was going on. And I think it's interesting that this woman was the therapist who worked with Teal, allegedly. Um, So the investigation that was initially opened to dig into Teal's claims of abuse and hold the parties responsible for her alleged abuse was ultimately shut down as her allegations came under doubt. So um, not to... I I say all of that to say this. Um, My point there is not that this woman was not potentially abused. It is quite possible. We know that it happens to people. We know that it happens, you know, in families. It's it's quite possible that it could be. She said that it was a family friend who was part of this cult. Some of that may be true. It could have been a family friend who um, who was abusing her in some way. 
does it seem likely that it was this entire satanic cult that like was responsible for the underpinnings of her entire like town that she grew up in and it persisted for you know almost a decade and a half very unlikely yeah and then like all that because didn't you say that there was something about an animal something she was cut up and or it was no a person supposedly they committed the murder of this dude and then cut open his corpse and sewed her up inside his corpse and it's then cut off his arms and legs and then uh, had sex yeah. with the corpse. like it's just it's just this whole thing mm. um I, I don't i just it, i struggled that i struggled to believe that that whole thing could take place and there could be absolutely no evidence um especially when law enforcement has kind of been called in to take a look at it. I think if there was anything there that was legitimate, it probably would have been looked into closer. But do I think that it's quite possible that she could have been abused by a family friend? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that happens to people every day, and it's yeah. it's absolutely devastating. Um, and I think it is not only negligent, but actively... Um, actively malevolent for this this woman this therapist to be kind of spinning that into something that it's not yeah to yeah. serve her own narrative yeah. just to say um again all of this is alleged alleged a l l e g e d just reminding <laughs> um so among other claims teal has claimed to be an alien from the star huh. arcturus <laughs> okay uh she's also claimed to be the reincarnation of indian guru guru sai baba of sirdi who lived from 1838 to 1918 uh-huh and she says she remembers his life as clearly as her own okay so clearly she must have been him she must have if she says it if she says it, then it must be. Must have been. Uh, so Why do I feel like she worked at a Claire's in another life? <laughs> so accurate. Like, I, if I don't you know, could see the videos of me, this woman, <laughs> so something accurate. Something about me feels like she used to be like former like mid-level management oh, at like God. a Claire's. Yes. Hmm. Yes. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about this, but that's the that's the vibe I'm getting. Yes. From Miss Miss Seal. <laughs> Miss Wet Seal. Miss W Seal. <laughs> Miss Teal. What's her name? Swan. Swan. Oh yeah. <laughs> I kept wanting to say Teal Seal. <laughs> teal Seal. That would have been better. See, that would have been better. Um so like I told you at the beginning, this is something that's going on currently. This is something that is, it's it's a very, very recent sort of thing, which is kind of exciting when you're researching cult because um, I'm so used to looking at cults like from the Jonestown era or like from the heyday from like the golden age of cults. Right. But as the internet has sort of developed, there are all these like really interesting spinoff groups that are kind of doing their things nowadays that we're not really necessarily looking as closely at. So again, this is all very recent. It was just 2011 when Teal re- released her first book, which was called The Sculptor in the Sky. <laughs> uh, and she also started her YouTube channel. Later that year, in 2011 still, she hosted one of her first talks in Salt Lake City, Utah, with around 20 people attending. Yep. And... That was the first of many talks that she would later upload to her YouTube channel. From humble beginnings, though, Teal built quite a following, amassing over 700,000 subscribers as of the release of this episode. Mm, Mmm, 700,000? Yeah, 700K. What the fuck are we doing wrong? I'm looking at our, like, 53 subscribers, 60-something. I I I clearly need to fucking, like, just get some big-ass fucking cardigans, put some fucking blue contacts in, and just start speaking in a very calm voice to you all every week and just making shit up that I just pull out of my ass every week so that that we can have over 700,000 subscribers to our bullshit. Okay, so this is like a train wreck (laughs) happening. It's like you see the train. The train is literally on the tracks right now. It is going. The wreck is happening. We're witnessing it right now, okay? Yeah. So this is exciting. But also, to your point, 
I wouldn't have a problem with that as long as we put up the disclaimer that everything we say is bullshit. Yes. <laughs> it's like at the and beginning of this. And then go about. I mean, that's basically say, what we're doing now. We're just doing it louder and uh, more aggressively, uh-huh. less calmly. This is true. This is this is very true. I wouldn't have a problem with that. I think that that would be that'd be great. Um, yeah, you just get a we'll get some cardigans for yeah, you. Get you absolutely. a whole fucking um, uh, what's her name? Uh, get a whole like Tati vibe going on. Yeah. <laughs> get a yes. whole Tati apology get video like a glow, vibe going on. Like you a need, glowy, like weird uh-huh. glowy, slightly sweaty skin, like you, to the point Patrick Bateman skin from American Psycho. Yeah. It was fucking very unnerving. You you need some bangles or something to make some yeah. sort of like click clacky sound. Noise. Oh, earrings, earrings. Move. Uh-huh. Yeah. Earrings and a bangle and yes. and some sort of like slubby like tea. And I can be um I'll just be like magenta wombat. There you Magenta go. wombat. Magenta wombat. I don't know what the fuck I'll be doing, but that's fine. Uh-uh. <laughs> fucking... <laughs> I'll be behind the camera with the cue cards. <laughs> love it, love it. Um, yeah. So apparently, I mean, she's doing something right. Um, her followers, this uh, again, over seven hundred thousand people uh, who follow her, they call themselves the Teal Tribe. Teal says that she. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I know. It's I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Just something about that. And the like, teal tribe. What was it? Potters in the sky. Pit. What was it? Sculptor. Sculptor. Sculptor in the sky. Sculptor in the sky. <laughs> Riders <laughs> on the storm. <laughs> just imagine some like very like painfully like horrible '90s style color scheme of a sky, and then there's like. You know, her, it's, it's like her hands. You know what I imagine? In the sky. I imagine that fucking scene from Ghost with Patrick Swayze. <laughs> yeah. The fucking pottery scene. I imagine that, but like overlaid like over like a sky. If that's like. the case, <laughs> it, yeah, if that's the case, then I just want to like paint my face up really scary and then just haunt her and then just be like, you in danger, girl. <laughs> you in danger, girl. Yeah. Um... So, so yeah, so they call themselves the Teal Tribe. Um, and Love Teal it. says that she has focused her ministry on healing others of their psychological ailments, including suicidal thoughts and repressed traumatic experiences through the use of frequent, almost daily sermon releases on Instagram and YouTube and through her practice of shadow work. Uh, mm-mm. See, once you start getting into that shadow work, Mm-hmm. You ain't fucking with it's my shadow. It's very ominous sounding. You're like, not, very... See, here's the thing. You're not going to fuck with my shadow. Like, me and my shadow, we've been together for a long time, right? Oh, she likes your shadow, though. We're going to get into it, but she actually likes your shadow. I don't want her to like my shadow. <laughs> I don't want her to know my shadow. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want, want her to I don't, I don't want her to look at my shadow, touch my shadow. <laughs> like, you know, my shadow would... Doesn't... Just do not concern yourself with my shadow. No, leave my Just shadow alone. Just don't worry alone, about it. Okay? Just don't worry about it. All right? Don't Good. look at it. No, don't. <laughs> you stay away. Bye. Um, yeah, so she's uh, she's actually very into shadow. So uh, I want to kind of talk about some of the important conte- concepts in the Teal Tribe philosophy. Um, hang in there with me because it's a little, it's very, hmm. it's kind of like if you were to take a Marshall Applewhite video and be like, this is what he means, like when he's talking, except there's just not a lot of meat and potatoes there. Mm. It's just a lot of things that like sound really good, but when you take them apart, it's like, hmm. Um, although what I appreciate in her videos is every now and then, not too infrequently, you'll catch like a grammatical error or like a spelling error, and I'm like, <laughs> this is why I couldn't be in a cult. Because the minute you make a grammatical error, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> That's it for me. I'm sorry. The improper you, use. You can't of the, be fucking God or whatever and be fucking up your grammar. Fucking the use like there incorrectly. Oh, triggered. Triggered. <laughs> Complete loss of faith. <laughs> so yeah, so we're gonna dig into some of the important concepts here. Um so the quote unquote governing truth of the universe is that of oneness. 
And that's kind of the guiding philosophy that I could find in uh, for the Teal Tribe. So the governing truth of the universe is that of oneness, meaning that um, we're looking for the, the quest um, I, that life represents for the Teal Tribe under Teal's teachings is to find oneness, to make oneself whole. We are supposedly fractured entities, and our goal in life is to find that oneness, and that's where peace is and happiness and contentment and all of that. Um, another important philosophy or another important concept is that physical reality is not static. It's made up of vibrating energy, and that energy is the key to your unbreakable connection with your highest potential self. Um, since physical reality is not static, you actually create the reality in which you live with your attention and focus of thought. This is not dissimilar to what we talk about when we talk about things like chaos magic, um, that by believing in something enough and by reaffirming that thing and directing your focus and your energy towards that thing, you can actually change the shape of reality and change the outcome of reality to move towards that intention. It's very similar to working magic, right? Magic comes down to um, intentions. It comes down to setting intentions and reaffirming those intentions and then taking, you know, it's, it's not just enough to have the intention and to reconfirm it, but you actually have to take action to bring that intention into the light, basically. And mm -hmm. it's a combination of all those things that is kind of magic. Um, so... So far, I'm not necessarily out um, as far as this philosophy goes. Because I do, I do believe that physical reality is not necessarily static. I do believe that, you know, we kind of create the reality in which we live in. But I think it's a little bit more complicated than just vibrating energy. I think yeah. it's our thoughts, it's our feelings, it's our actions. Um, it's what we bring to it. Um, so the Teal Tribe believes that or Teal Swan teaches that you can actually change reality by changing your thoughts. And this concept is borrowed from many things like we've talked about. It's borrowed from chaos magic, um, really just magic in general as far as the practice of setting intentions, as well as the law of attraction, which is a common central belief in many New Age groups. Um, that's an episode on its own. We won't get into the law of attraction today, but if you're interested in it, I would uh, highly recommend that you look it up. Um, there's a lot of really cool YouTube videos on it. Um, and it's kind of an interesting concept, but it's one of those things where if you run with it too far, it's going to fuck you up. Or just, you know, just bug us until we do it. Yeah. Or just that bug me too. until I do it. I'll do it I for mean, you. I just, mean, you got this episode on a cult. So, I mean, an alleged, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. An alleged <laughs> cult. An alleged episode of an alleged cult. Exactly. That you are allegedly going to be receiving. Yes. So. Um, another important concept is that, uh, and this is, this is going to be key as we move forward in our discussion here, um, permanent death, as in the annihilation or ceasing completely of your existence is believed to be impossible under Teal's teachings. Um, Teal preaches that, quote, physical life is just a temporary expression of the eternal you, end quote. So while this belief, like that particular quote, out of context, sounds kind of nice, right? Physical life is just a temporary expression of the eter eternal you. Um, it sounds really good. Yeah, it's something I would definitely want on a t-shirt. <laughs> Or on a pillow. Yeah. Uh, do a cross stitch of it. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it sounds really nice until you kind of start digging into the deeper meaning that's there. It's this belief in particular that has gotten Teal Swan into hot water due to her outspoken views on suicide, a view which is, in my opinion, misguided at best. So Teal Swan has said as part of her teachings, quote, what suicide is, is pushing the reset button. There is nothing wrong with suicide, end quote. Mm. Curiously, two of Swan's followers have committed suicide and opponents of her methods have claimed that she led them to that behavior. Um, her teachings are par partly drawn from her own recovered childhood trauma, which we've talked about, that she claims left her with the same suicidal feelings. Um, in fact, 
her teaching methods sometimes involve participants actually imagining in specific detail their deaths, occasionally by suicide. While Teal is not directly encouraging suicide, um, and she claims to, quote, have the strategy to help people out of suicidal thoughts, her highly triggering comments and extreme views on suicide um, trickle into almost every piece of content that she produces. Um, And these views, obviously, um, Kenny's just hearing that, but I'm sure he would agree with me that this is obviously very different from what we believe. Um, We do not support those views. We don't look at suicide as a reset button. No. Um, Definitely, if you're struggling with suicidal thoughts, please, 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 please get help. Seek qualified professional help qualified professional help it's 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 really chintzy and it's that bullshit that they tell you in high school but we've you know we've had friends who met with untimely ends as a result of mental unchecked mental health um disorders and it's it's really dumb it's that whole thing that they tell you in high school and it rings so inauthentic but it really is true that suicide is a permanent problem to or a permanent solution to a temporary problem yeah and just the fact that i mean to just sort of like downplay it so much as she seems to be doing yeah that just does that just doesn't sit well with me no. at all and it makes me really angry because yeah. you know and i'm not i guess not not speaking for her own mental state but you downplaying something like that can have a significant impact on someone who complete who hears what you are saying and it may not be mm-hmm. like that big to you or you may be you know downplaying it as like oh a, a reset button or whatever there are people that take that seriously and right. that they listen to that and that is amplified to them yeah and and that is just so gross in my yeah. opinion and and honestly like catch a charge bitch like yeah. <laughs> i mean just quite it, seriously it, it's so grossly negligent that it's just like i i'm i'm dead ass serious catch a fucking charge like yeah. honestly it it and it, it, it mm. yeah 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 um yeah she she has lots of little nasty pieces like that um she compares her her followers with who are struggling with suicidal thoughts to quote unquote stray cats and quote unquote orphaned children. Um, It's these controversial statements about and views on suicide that have earned Teal Swan the nickname, the suicide catalyst, which is a play on her self-given nickname of the spiritual catalyst. So people started calling her that after, you know, after she made that statement about suicide being a reset button and it coming out that, you know, two of her followers have committed suicide and um, these very unfortunate and dangerous, frankly, views that she has and is spreading on suicide, um, people people started calling her the suicide catalyst, which, um, I mean, you could also just call her a cunt. Allegedly. I mean, that's literally what I was about to say. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I was like, well, how about we just call her a cunt? But, an alleged, I mean, an alleged cunt. Can I know that please? that, um, you know, I know that particular word can offend some people, so I do apologize, but it's the word that I'm feeling at the moment. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's fine. We got listeners in Scotland. It'll be all right. Uh. Okay. So no overview on Teal Swan would be complete without making mention of her use of shadow work. Teal claims that since humans are relationally dependent, as in we're dependent on relationships with authority figures in our lives, such as our parents, for basic necessities such as food and shelter, that we actually from a young age develop a split consciousness because some good traits are rewarded by our families and other bad traits are chastised by those same family members. We emphasize the traits that are rewarded and de-emphasize the traits that are not rewarded. And Teal refers to the emphasized traits as our conscious mind and the de-emphasized traits as our subconscious mind. Um, Psychologically speaking, that's not at all what those terms mean, but we're just going to leave it there and we're just going to move on. Uh Uh, In her own words, quote, shadow work is about consciously doing the work to become conscious about the unconscious, end quote. Makes perfect sense, right? No, not at all. 
No, I mean, no. I mean, I'm just, I, I, I literally just like, I don't know. It just seems like bullshit to me. Yeah. <laughs> Does it? <laughs> just, Do you think it might like be? It's like a lot of bullshit if you ask me. Ooh, I mean, this, like, I don't know that I could sit through one of her fucking talks. Oh, let me tell you. I don't this, know that I could. I don't know that I could do it is that. A challenge. I don't know that I'd be able to do that. I done fucked my YouTube algorithm all up too, bitch. Because now I'm getting all kinds of like fucking ads to join all these fucking like spiritual like but, fucking but groups. You've been we brought you brought up Till Swan to me a while back, so I feel like it's probably been fucked. I know, but like every time <laughs> I like go when I when I did the deep dive for the research, like it in recent weeks my my algorithm has suffered yeah it's like all like beauty guru drama and then like join this fucking cult join society cult. you and know I'm what like, mm. kind of similar very similar <laughs> um yeah so shadow work is basically teal's patented process of bringing light uh bringing to light those elements of one's subconscious in order to become a fully realized whole person because again the whole point of our life is to achieve this oneness and we can only do that by bringing um the bad quote-unquote traits um that have been pushed into our subconscious by our family members in our formative years to light so uh shadow works a big con concept she also does these fucking like she does these like bad paintings <laughs> as part of the shadow work. So shadow work appears to like mostly consist of just sitting around and thinking about all the shitty parts of your personality and like wow. um what do they call them? Uh me on a Friday night. Oh shit, there's a there's actually a concept in psychology for um fuck, I have it. It's um everybody everybody has it to some degree. Uh hang on. It's okay. Yee Yee truck will be here for you. He's he's filling in the gaps. God bless him for it. Oh, it's like a it's like thoughts that aren't invited. Um, intrusive thoughts. Intrusive thoughts. Yes. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes I know that. I know. Oh, uh, yes. Frequently. I appreciate it. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm pissed that my intrusive thoughts didn't chime up and say this is what we're called. No, uh, no. Intrusive thoughts. They're yes. a bitch. Yes. So a lot of it is sitting around and thinking about like that type of thing. And putting a lot of focus on bringing that out to the light. Um, a lot of it is focused on like just basically shit talk in your family. Which may be not the most positive thing that you could focus on doing. Um, but a lot of the members and ex-members, well mostly ex-members, talk about how there was a big emphasis on like figuring out how your family fucked you up. Like it's clearly mm. your family's problem. Yeah, And um but she also does this thing where she, like, makes these paintings that are, like, I mean, like, they're not bad. Because art is objective. But they're they're not. I mean, they're bad when they're coming from her. <laughs> Let me just say they're that. They're just not. They're just not. And, uh. And she she does these paintings, and supposedly they are a product of her shadow work. And then she sells them to her followers. I bet she does sell them. Yeah. So it's 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 just very interesting how the concept of shadow work kind of morphs through this stuff. I, like I've just found my way to her fucking Instagram, and like just some of the bullshit. You see that's the cardigans. Here. I mean, I see the you. cardigans, but like I'm also listening to this. Like, half this shit doesn't even make any fucking sense. It's like, it's not possible to change your world while you, as an individual, remain the same. Which is like, I mean, yeah. But, like, you can find that in a Hallmark card. I mean... <laughs> Again, I just want to remind you, 700,000 subscribers. Oh, Clearly God. she's doing something right that we're not doing. Is she, though? Is, I, is I she? Is she? I don't know. Is she? So at this point, I want to kind of pivot away from uh, discussing the very vague, very fucking vague uh, tenets of this group and move into a little bit more of a scientific um, examination of them, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, Science when, class people. Yes. So one of the reasons that uh, I think, one of my theories, um, that we don't talk about more of the groups like the Teal Tribe that are developing nowadays um, that, you know, 
the question is, are are they a cult? Are they not a cult? And it's not like a lot of people, because it is this relatively new thing, it's not like a lot of people have come before us to basically lay all that out for us, like something like Jamestown. There's a thousand different takes on Jamestown, but there is an established narrative that most people basically agree on. Um, and so you can kind of sketch out the story, you know, hit the introduction, talk about Jim Jones and the different, and he's a fascinating person, um, a terrible person, but a fascinating person. You can talk about the different elements that like went into making him who he is. And then you can talk about like the basic tenets of the group and um, kind of give that overlay and, and different people have different opinions on where it went wrong and how we led to mass suicide. Um, some might say murder. I would be in that camp. Um but with something like the Teal Tribe, number one, the scale is a little bit different because we're not looking at it with 2020 vision. We're looking, it's kind of happening here and now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not something that we're looking back on like Jonestown. Yeah. Um, and another th- another element I think that it makes it, that makes it hard to talk about this stuff is, you know, we we don't want to be as out there as this group is, we don't want to be basically shit talking people without any kind of evidence. Right. 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 I think it's important to have actual scientific evidence based models on which to evaluate a group like Teal, the Teal tribe, um, and someone like Teal Swan. So, I kind of went in search of that for this episode because I wanted to give us a little bit of legitimacy. Okay. Because as as much as we like to talk shit, I thought maybe we back it up. Talk shit, get legit, man. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's what we're doing. So um, that led me to uh, the bite model. So the bite model is a model that is used for evaluating the quote-unquote cult potential of a social group. Um, it was developed by Stephen Hansen, Hassan, who is a qualified mental health professional who's been helping people leave destructive cults since 1978 after he was actually deprogrammed from Sun Young Moon's Unification Church. So he has been there. He's gone through the process of being deprogrammed. Um, and then he decided to use his efforts um, to, I guess, to use his life. Actually, he's basically devoted his life to this, to helping um, people understand what makes a group a cult. Um, and he helps with deprogramming people and things like that. He's written lots of books on the topic of cults and destructive mind control, and he currently works as a speaker, consultant, author, and educator on the subject of cults. So he helped develop the bite model to describe the specific methods that cults use to recruit and maintain control over people. Bite stands for behavior, information, thought, and emotional control. So those are kind of like the four areas of control that cults um, exercise over people, behavior, Mm -hmm. information, thought, and emotional. Um, Based on research and theory by Robert J. Lifton, Margaret Singer, Edward Sheen, uh, Louis Jolion West, and others who study brainwashing in Maoist China, as well as cognitive dissonance theory, which is popular here in the States, Um, By Leon Festinger, the BITE model is one of the few scientific tools that we have available to help evaluate the behavior of social groups like the Teal Tribe and quantitatively, scientifically define whether the group's functionality falls into the realms of the modern day cult. So we getting legit here. It sounds fucking legit to me. Put your glasses on, put your white coat on. We are going into the laboratory and we're going to talk about it. Okay. All right. So if you are interested in uh, learning more about the bite model itself, though, uh, I would direct you to um, Stephen Hassan's website. Um, It's the Freedom of Mind Resource Center, and you can find it at www.freedomofmind.com. It's really interesting, some of the work that he's done on cults. You guys who who really wanted cult episodes, um, definitely check him out. I think you would be fascinated by the work he's doing. Um. For now, though, 
I want to take a look at the teal tribe through the lens of the bite model in order to evaluate whether this could be called a cult according to that model. I'm into it. Um, now, a lot of this information, I should say, is based on it's former- It's alleged. <laughs> it is all alleged. It's alleged. But it's based on former members of the group who have since left the group who have shared information about the group, as well as just looking at the way that the group functions. Got it. Um, so the first sort of umbrella is behavior control. Um, there's a lot of different elements to this, some of which I think are more in line with the traditional cults that we saw back in the day, like Heaven's Gate, like Jonestown, like um, the in-person, shall we say, cults. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say Manson. I, you guys know my view on that. Go back and listen to the Manson episode. I don't necessarily consider Manson a cult. Okay. Um, so behavior control, um, we're looking at the, the elements that I think are a little bit more outdated when it comes to an internet cult, uh, alleged internet cult, um, are dictating where and with whom you live, controlling clothing and hairstyle, restricting or controlling sexuality, sleep deprivation, restricting leisure time and activities, requiring you to seek permission for major decisions, all of these um types of things are things that we see in traditional cults, but it's very difficult for an online group to manage these types of things. So we're not seeing direct involvement um, with Teal Swan um, and her administrators or whatever in her followers' um, lives in this particular way. What we are seeing, though, are some of the other um, some of the other pieces of behavior control, um, promoting dependence and obedience. This is a big one. Uh, Teal Swan claims to have information that no one else has uh, because she's an alien. Right. From some far off planet sometimes. But then other times she's like a person who has gone through like the whole like splitting of good and bad traits and consciousness and subconscious. Like sometimes she's that, but then sometimes she's not. Sometimes she's an alien. <laughs> sometimes she's a shadow worker. She's always a cunt though. <laughs> an alleged cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny's like, no, nah, I think we can say straight up she's cut. Yeah, I think she's cut. As I mean, as far as I can see, it looks looks if it if it looks like wood, smells like wood, it must be one. <laughs> um. So yeah. So she's claiming to have information that nobody else has, and you have to be close to her, i.e., follow her teachings and rules, and do as she says in order to gain access to that information. So that is promoting de dependence and obedience. Um, because she is seen as this figure who is above and must be listened to and, you know, can be depended on to give information. If you want all of the secret information, all you have to do is just like, subscribe, and follow. Right. Uh. Maybe that should be our new pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another big thing in behavior control um, is modifying behavior with rewards and punishments. Um the whole concept of shadow work is basically overt behavior modification. It's uh, all of it is focused on like looking at behavior, looking at things you do, thoughts that you have, and bringing the quote unquote subconscious to towards consciousness. Um, all of that is modifying behavior, um, regulating what and how much you eat and drink. This is a really interesting category because. Um, uh, within behavior control because Teal Swan actually lays out in extreme detail what people should and should not eat. She has several sermons on this. Um, she claims to have the ability to view auras. And when people eat something that they shouldn't, she can see their auras change color. And she therefore knows that people's bodies don't resonate with those foods. Uh. Um, she recommends eliminating sugar, dairy, meat, simple carbohydrates, alcohol, and processed foods. And she claims to be a medical intuitive who watches energy in people's bodies. I've never heard of a medical a intuitive. A medical intuitive? Yeah. A medical intuitive. Apparently, yes. So you're telling me this bitch can look at me and tell me that I had a 20-piece chicken McNugget <laughs> yesterday? I guess she fucking can. Tell me what I ate yesterday, huh? Huh, Seal? <laughs> huh, Seal? Ridiculous. Teal. Yeah. Fuck. Teal. Why do I keep wanting to say seal? I don't, because the wet seal. Where did the I fucking you seal? You've it. done fucked me up. Teal. Teal All swan. of a sudden, seal just comes in. Looking for you to a kiss from a rose on the grave. <laughs> Ooh, 
<laughs> Seal's like, hey, leave me the fuck out of this. He's like, look, I'm not doing nothing. I'm just over here trying to live my life. I'm going to tell you what, though. If she did, if she looked at me and she could be, and she just like laid her hand on my forehead and it's like, I can see the 20 piece and large Coke that you drank yesterday, that you ate yesterday. We, I, I might. <laughs> Bitch, I could do that. <laughs> what the yeah, fuck? Yeah, but you know me. Any given fucking day, I'd be like, know I see me. that 20 piece. And you know me. And then she like follows it up with like a, and the spicy mustard. Mm. But you only Always finished two of the mustard. packs, not the three. Wow. Uh, are you are you cutting back? I'm cutting back. Only it's using a, two packs now? Only so using three? two packs. Wow. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> By the way, I did I did have uh I mean, good on you if you can get through a twenty piece with only two packs, because I definitely crushed two packets of honey mustard with my ten piece mm-hmm. nugget. Which I did enjoy this weekend because I uh had a hangover and um the only thing that heals me when I have a hangover is uh McDonald's chicken nuggets for some reason. It's they great. were good as hell too. It's great. Mine were, good. Mine were good, too. I love when you get that, like, nice golden brown, yeah. and it's still warm, oh, yeah. and but then, like, kind of hot on the inside. Like, mm-hmm. warm on the outside, hot on the inside. Mm-hmm. I've been able to use two packs by just, like, instead of taking the whole thing and dunking it, mm-hmm. like, coming at it, coming in at it at an angle, mm-hmm. and then just, like, kind of getting, like, a nice glaze of dipping sauce oh, over so it's a not portion. Coating. Yeah. Got it. And I've also been trying to just like not double dip, just do it once and then just eat the whole chicken nugget too. Okay. Versus like going back, you know. Just See, this is what our back. cult could be about. <laughs> this is what our cult could be about. <laughs> Absolutely. You got to go in a diagonal. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. It's just a fuck. Our, our cult is just a fucking McDonald's mukbang. <laughs> mm, I don't like that. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Mukbangs freak on me Mondays, the fuck out. On Mondays. Uh, mm-hmm. Just I don't Monday know. Mukbangs, of the month. Mukbangs fuck with me. You can do, you can do that one. You can I'll do, do that, that one. I don't fuck with that. Um, yeah, so the last point in behavior control that I wanted to hit on Teal Tribe uh, is, of course, what is arguably the biggest... Well, there's a lot of problems here, um, but this is certainly one of the problems. Um, exploiting you financially. Oh. So Teal isn't just doing this for like the clout. shits and giggles no for the likes and follows no this bitch has 700,000 subscribers on youtube you if mean- you if you don't understand like the adsense revenue that this cunt is getting alleged cunt um <laughs> just from my fucking research like damn it oh i know <laughs> except I ad know. blocker <laughs> bitch <laughs> anyway that was probably really loud <laughs> sorry about that it's okay i'm um, not going to edit it out <laughs> I'm very sorry. rip headphone users. Anyway, so yeah, so she in, on top of all of the revenue that she's getting off of this platform that she's built on YouTube, um, she is also uh, she charges members to take part in retreats, and it's like five thousand dollars to go to a fucking retreat with her, um, which is actually kind of a low price. Like if we look at like Jared Leto, what he's charging, but then again, I guess he is a like super famous rock star. I would rather go to Jared Leto though. I Maybe don't know. he he. He seems like he would be like really stinky and handsy, and she, like she thinks she, I feel like she would at least smell nice. Like she would be weird as fuck, but she would at least smell nice. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Jared later just he really he really fucking weirds me out. <laughs> I just can't. I can't with him. <laughs> Every time I look at him, I see his character in uh, Requiem for a Dream, and I I just can't fuck with him. Got it. Got it. Uh, <laughs> So, um, yeah, so there's the retreats that cost $5,000, and she actually used to charge $2,400 for training in her quote-unquote completion process until she got fined for practicing therapy without a license. I love that. Love I love that. whoever, we like, love reported it. that, and then whoever was just like, <laughs> psych, bitch, you can't do shit without a license. Look, just go get your LMFT license. I mean, don't. Because I, no, it helps I, if you're illegitimate. <laughs> but, but I just don't understand how these cult leaders oh, be doing God. all this. So you got to cross your T's and dot your I's, honey. When I make my cult, yeah. nobody's coming for me on anything because I'm going to have all those certs in place and ready to go. <laughs> you're not coming at me for shit. Nope. Not a goddamn thing. So um, that rounds out behavior control. Um, next is information control. Um, the key points here, and I'm going to skip some of the, um, cause we're running along. I'm going to skip some of the 
points under the bite model. I'm only going to talk about what is relevant to this particular cult. So there's yeah. a lot of there's a lot of points that they don't necessarily fill out, but they score pretty high in the points that they do fill out under uh-huh. under information control. So um, forbidding you to speak with ex members and critics. Um, Scientology's suppressive person is Teal Swan's hater, and Teal preaches that her critics actually idolize her and feel inferior to her. Sure they do. Sure, Jan. Yeah, and she dissuades followers very strongly from communicating with any ex-members or critics of the groups, basically us. Um, (laughs) Damn, we're going to lose so many followers and listeners. So I'm sorry if you are part of the Teal Tribe, but I guess this is the end of the road. It's Mm, us for them. So Mm. I wish you well. Awkward. Um, they also discourage access to non-cult sources of information. Teal says that the media shouldn't be trusted if they say anything negative about her. Sounds familiar. Hmm. So yeah, now. it does, doesn't it? Ooh. Hmm. Eh, where have I heard that before? She also know. actively discourages teacher hopping and says that her students need to remain loyal to a specific practice and teacher, i.e. her. So it's not like a second opinion type of thing. This whole oneness of That's, eternity. Yeah, it's like no, you, you don't have need to follow me. Opinion. You don't. You don't need that. You don't, no. need to, you don't need to listen to anyone else, but me. Yes. Yes, very, very much. And that was like that's that's one of the biggest things I think that for me personally um, leads me. Well, we'll we'll discuss it. But one of the biggest things for me is that that insistence on information that comes from me can be trusted automatically because it comes from me. Right. right. Um, uh, another thing, um, generating and using propaganda extensively. Teal releases videos and blog posts between YouTube, Instagram, and her website multiple times per week. This woman is a propaganda machine. And honestly, as a content creator myself, I'm, I'm honestly kind of jealous of that. But then again, if all I needed to do was hop on camera half sauced and talk out of my ass for 20 minutes, I could probably manage that. I could probably turn that out too. I mean, shit, girl, you already sit on a mic half sauced and like talk about <laughs> yes, a bit but I have to do my hour. research. Yeah. I can't just like tell you shit as it pops into my fucking head. There's like work behind this shit. That's true. That's true. I mean, if I just got on the mic and just fucking rambled about I mean, listen, it seems like she's lemons. just doing improv. Like, yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Just roll with just it. Just really dangerous improv. <laughs> really dangerous improv. Just roll with it. Yeah. What that is, that is they say? Yes, Anne. <laughs> if you if you watch her videos, that is how it seems. Honestly, um, it's, oh, I have. It, it seems them. very She's much like fucking improv. terrifying. And we're not playing any of them on this episode. No. I would love to pull some clips for you, but I'm not about that copyright life, so I won't be doing that. She seems like the one. <laughs> no, she uh, most definitely. So uh, that's not you. Not I'm not going down like that. You're not going to get me on that. Allegedly. An al- alleged. Um, uh, other concepts of information control that relate to this group specifically, um, gaslighting you to make you doubt your own memory. Uh, Teal Swan, as part of her teachings, she will um, plant false memories in the minds of her followers. It's part of the shadow work. So it's kind of like it's it's actually very similar to those interviews that therapists were doing with children during the satanic panic where there will be a suggestion that is dropped in in the course of questioning. And the questioning continues until that suggestion is sort of picked up. And it's very similar to in Scientology, part of your uh like progression in Scientology is to confess things that you've done and you keep going and keep going. And the person who's interviewing you keep pushes you to keep going and keep going and keep going until eventually you just, you're just literally making shit up. Right. The difference being that in Scientology, there is literally somebody there. um, And sometimes it's the interviewer and sometimes there's another person there whose job it specifically is to record everything that you confess. And that recording is then given to Scientology's fucking central command or whatever, and they store that shit, and then they use it against you if you were ever to leave their cult. Hmm. Yeah. So the difference with uh, the Teal Tribe is there's not any, as far as anybody knows, there's not any, like, recording of that information, but it's just, like, kind of a mind fuck. 
basically that yeah, you're recovering these that. memories of things happen that happened to you. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it, according to ex members, is centered around ways that your family members fucked you up. Again, kind of going back to like blaming it on your family, right? Which which kind of factors into the whole behavior control and isolation thing because if you are having these false memories of these ways that your family members fucked you up, then you're not going to want to associate with them. And so you're going to isolate further. And so you're going to be even more dependent on this group for social interaction. Right. Do you see how it all kind of works together? Yeah. Like it, there's a, there's definitely a narrative, a picture being painted there, a yeah. shadow work picture, a really shitty fucking really picture sh- of like I can paint my some bullshit. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, so, while it's not known whether those confessions specifically, there doesn't seem to be any process for keeping the information and the false memories that are confessed to and that are brought up in those shadow work sessions. Um, I'm sure that on a personal level, that information could potentially be used against you if you were to move against the cult, right? I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, against totally. the alleged uh, cult group, whatever you alleged. Call it. it could allegedly be used against you. Yeah. Um, so moving from information control into thought control, that kind of blends nicely into that last point. Um, thought control entails implementing, uh, black and white us versus them thinking. This is very much seen in the Teal tribe with critics being personified as evil and enemies to the group. Um, and people who idolize Teal and are just jealous, um, Placing extreme or exaggerated importance on seemingly trivial events or ideas. We see that a lot in the false memories thing. Mm -hmm. As they're doing the shadow work, there's like all of this fucking importance placed on like your mom didn't give you a fucking blanket when she laid you down for a nap when you were like six months old. And that's like the worst fucking thing in the world. (laughs) Yeah. Um allowing only positive thoughts this is a really interesting thing because um so under the bite model one of the elements of thought control is allowing only positive thoughts the teal swan group kind of does the opposite of that with all of their focus on shadow work um one of the core messages of the group is that you have to have authenticity in that like bringing the darker elements of your personality the subconscious elements of your personality to the light which means embracing one's like darker elements and so it's almost like the focus instead of only allowing positive thoughts the focus is really on those negative elements um which is something that becomes very dangerous if you're dealing with people who have right who have demonstrated issues with depression and suicidal thoughts and things of of that nature yeah i don't it's kind of just go it kind of just reminds me of what you were talking about earlier with just like that heavy like you know, you go to that like shadow place and then just sit and then just talk about like all of your neck, ne- like all of the negative things about right. yourself. And, uh, right. I don't yeah. work out. I don't jive with that. No, mm-hmm. no. Nah. Um, rejecting rational analysis, criticisms and doubt is also something that we see cults doing when it comes to thought control. Um, this is something that's very much alive in the teal song group. Doubters just don't understand what teal is trying to teach. Um, no credence whatsoever is given to counterpoints. Um, they're not interested in listening to their critics. They're not interested in listening to uh, media. They're not interested in um, second opinions, right? Because there's no teacher hopping. Um, it's all, you know, what Teal says goes. And lastly, as related to thought control, they use loaded language and cliches to stop complex thought and induce hypnotic or trance states to indoctrinate. Uh, this is where I most wanted to play w- a clip from one of her YouTube videos, but I just, being that this is such a current topic, I'm just not trying to fuck with it. Um, so if you if you go and listen to one of her videos, you will automatically understand like why this is such a huge point but there is this loaded language and she does use these cliches and these things that sound nice like the the universal goal of life is to pursue oneness it sounds really nice but what it's being used to prop up is the concept of suicide as a reset button right yeah so it, it looks really nice on the surface and it sounds really nice but when you dig into it, it either doesn't mean anything 
a lot of these things that she's saying, or it has this like really insidious connotation. Yeah, there's like this weird undertone to it that like just doesn't sit right. Right, and very much the her speech pattern reminds me a lot of Marshall Applewhite. It reminds me of that very trance like it's all there's a voice that is put on and the voice is very nice and easy to listen to and the speech pattern is very much like this and everything kind of sounds the same and there's a rhythm to it and the reason that rhythm is there is so that you can get lulled into this trance state where you're sort of just taking in the words and and your conscious mind is not checking that information yeah, see, this shit doesn't work on me because me, I get bored AF and I'm like, I, I'm, like I'm like falling asleep. I'm out. I'm like over here. And then, you know, we couldn't be, it wouldn't work for us because, you know, with the way that sometimes when we get angry, like we can't, we can't do that. Mm, no. I can't sit and pull that voice for I like. I just check the fuck out. It's kind of like NPR to me. I can't, I cannot for the life of me. I know that NPR has some really good content, but like some of it is just so fucking difficult for me to listen to because it just sounds the same. Same. Yeah, yeah, and we couldn't do that because we'd be getting loud as fuck, and sometimes our you know accents just get a little bit <laughs> pronounced, pronounced and drawn out, and I just don't think that that um, would work. I, I don't think that that would work. I don't think that I would be able to hypnotize you, would I? <laughs> At least I until you know. smack your fucking mic soon. <laughs> Boom. All right, so moving into the last section of the bite model, looking at emotional control, there's a couple things here. Um, threatening your friends and family. <laughs> Sorry. This is something, again, like so many things with this group that we're seeing, it's not necessarily a direct approach. But yet, if you're doing this shadow work, if you're looking at you know things that your family did to shape you into this, like, in your opinion, misshapen, horrible person that you are today, you're not necessarily going to feel very positively about them if you're spending a lot of time thinking about the negative elements of yourself and how they may have contributed to that. Right. Um, So it's not a direct thing. It's like this indirect, insidious sort of underlying thing. Uh, Promoting feelings of guilt, shame, and unworthiness. Teal, uh, through her shadow work routine, I'm not saying that all shadow work would lead to these feelings, but... If the goal of it is to focus on the negative parts of your personality and not necessarily negative, but the the things that have sort of been pushed down, um, I can see where that could lead straight to feelings of guilt, shame and unworthiness for a lot of people. Um, it could also be used to instill irrational fears of questioning or leaving the group. Um, and it could lead you to label some emotions as evil, worldly, sinful or wrong. Um the last point when it comes to emotional control uh, is, and it ties in, a lot of this is interrelated, but um, shunning you if you disobey or disbelieve. This is very much something that happens within this group. We see it probably most strongly in Scientology, where literally, you know, if you have been like Tom Cruise, if he leaves Scientology, he's fucked. That dude is pretty done. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. He's he's finished. He's um, done. Finite. There have even been cases where, you know, there have been alleged. Let me just say it this way. There have been people who were a member of certain groups that when they ceased becoming, ceased being members of that group, they uh, also ceased being members of the group of the living who (laughs) are here with us on Earth. Yeah, Um, yeah. And so that's probably an extreme. What we're extreme, but I mean... It happens. It certainly does, in particular in a group that was started by a man with the initials LRH. Anyway, moving on. (laughs) The Teal Squan group, of course, again, doesn't have that direct of an action, but it is sort of like this, um, it's it's not to that degree, but Teal Squan strongly discourages uh, contact with ex-members and non-believers. We don't talk to them. We don't know them. They turn their backs on us. They're, you know, jealous or they're flawed or they're not worth listening to, right? Um, and so you are kind of shunned. Mm-hmm. And that's what we've seen with a lot of people who have left this group. Um, now, one ex-member in particular that I did want to call out um, because he supplied a lot of the information that helped to 
kind of assemble the bite model for this group um, is Andy Fellows. So in 2019, a former follower of Teal Swan began speaking out about the group, which he openly refers to as a cult. We refer to as an alleged cult. Alleged cult. Andy Fellows has dedicated his YouTube channel listed under Andy the Fellows, and I will spell it for you because it is weird. Uh, There are some E's in there that you might not expect. Uh, A-N-D-E-Y, the Fellows, which is F-E-L-L-O-W-E-S, and it's all one word. Um, That's his YouTube channel, as well as his website, which is just andyfellows.wordpress.com. He's dedicated both that YouTube channel and his website to getting the truth out about this group. Uh, In an emotional video that... Andy made last July about leaving the cult, he said, quote, by the, tam- by the time I came across Teal, I had suicide on my mind more often than was healthy, and I had previously been prescribed medicine for depression. I was a vulnerable person. I was an at-risk person who needed support, encouragement, and understanding. I didn't need the unqualified advice of a spiritual catalyst. I didn't need to be taken advantage of, end quote. Mm. Um, so I highly encourage you all to take a look at Andy's YouTube channel and his website and listen to him tell the story in his own words of his experience within the Teal Swan cult he's got a lot of alleged cult he's got a lot of content about that he has um, I think it's like an hour and a half long interview where he kind of talks in detail about that and then he has since um interviewed other ex-members including most recently an admin a former admin of the group um following their own departures from the group that he refers to as a cult so there's a lot of good information there if you're looking for kind of like interviews with people one-on-one um on their experience of this group um So now I kind of wanted to take it towards a discussion. We've had like a little discussion here and there, but I wanted to this, this group in particular, and part of the reason why it took me so long to cover them is because it's not necessarily something that we can out and out label as a cult, right? (laughs) Well, Mr. Uh, What's his name over there? Andy Fellows definitely is clear. It's clear where he stands. Andy Fellows with an E most definitely said, fuck alleged. It's a cult. Yeah, so he he definitely has... The name of our new book. Fuck Alleged. It's a cult. (laughs) Into it. Into it. Yeah, so he's he's very clear on where he stands. It's kind of a... It's kind of a, uh, I guess, there, there's a big question, and there are lots of people who, well, not lots of people, but there's a small sort of corner of the internet that is talking about this. Is Teal Swan a cult? Is Teal Swan not a cult? She actually has released a video um, called Is Teal Swan a Cult, um, in which she kind of attempts to fire back at some of these allegations. But I think it's pretty clear looking at the bite model, looking at something that has kind of been standardized and can be used to apply to lots of different groups with lots of different belief systems. Um, there are some things on there that stand out pretty strongly as qualities of this group. Yeah. With regard to behavior, thought, emotion, and information control. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that even like I I, I wouldn't even need like a bite model <laughs> to just be like you're like you know, I just feel it in my bones because it's just weird. I mean, because yeah. you know, like there are several things. Like one, this bitch just has like a look in her eye that like mm-mm, I don't yeah. I don't I don't trust it. But also the thing is is that when you have this situation where you have someone who sort of poses themselves as like the center of this group and it 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 very much negates anything that she anything that like might be passively seen as like surface level like goodness as far as like oh you know oneness and whatever all of that is washed away by the fact that this is really just about this person's ego and her bag honey twenty four hundred dollars for a training class Ooh, my. Did y'all hear that? He had something to say. Wow. Yee Truck Man has some <laughs> strong opinions on this. But $2,400 um, for a training but that's completion what I'm course, $5,000 for a retreat. That's what I'm saying. It's all about the ego. It's all about to 
to fill her own desire for things that she wants and that she needs. You know, it's 700. When you get this, like, it, it, it's kind of like when you go, you know, you're driving down the road and you see these big, huge churches, right? Mm-hmm. And these, like, big, huge, you know, churches. And then you've got these people that, you know, make all this money off of other people. And it, it, I, I think that when you get to a point to where you are really, it is so self-centered, it just, to me, that is the biggest red flag. Yeah. Um. I don't, I don't, what, I, for me personally, I wouldn't necessarily need to go and evaluate like, oh, you know, or what are we, you know, controlling and what are we doing this and this, this and this, which, you know, not, no shade towards the bite model because that's a standard and that's what, you know, you can use, but. Just for me personally, and I guess it's just because we're not, I don't think you or I are, um, they're a target audience for a cult, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think, I think we're probably much I, more the target profile for cult, cult leaders. leaders. <laughs> Damn, but, uh, going back to that ego. <laughs> but that's fine. Shit. Um, luckily we're far too lazy to do that. Fucking way far too lazy. <laughs> But, but that's my opinion. To me, like, you get this person who just sits themselves and they place themselves on this pedestal and, you know, you and I am the answer and I am the way and da 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 and all this other bullshit. Fuck you. Like, go Girl, on Girl, Pinhead is you the have, only way. It, it, pinhead is literally the only <laughs> way, okay? Um, I mean, unless you come at me with a fucking puzzle box to join your cult, I, I don't want it. I don't, I, I don't want it. And... And it's just so frustrating, like I said before, with the fact that, you know, you're downplaying your words and your phrasing when you say things like reset. Right. And 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 how that can impact people so profoundly Mm -hmm. and has proven to do so because, Mm -hmm. you know, people I mean, I mean, look at what you said. It was two people, right? Yeah. Um, Yeah. So it. It's just so frustrating because when you have people and you have that sort of platform, you have 700,000 subscribers. You have a huge platform and there is so much that you could be doing that could be positive. Right. Like actual, I'm talking about like actual, like positive work, actually uplifting people, actually being there to support people who have, um, you know, uh, who have issues actually being there to help you know people who may be in a really dark headspace mm-hmm. you know and and I think that anytime you have any platform regardless of whether you have 700,000 subscribers or whether or not you have fucking 10 <laughs> like, right you know what I mean like I, I think if you have any sort of platform it's your responsibility to um to I guess not not want to fuck it up, but like well, to it, make sure that you're giving back and to also make right. sure that you are that that with a with any sort of platform comes a responsibility. You know, we have fun and we kiki on the show all the time. But at the end of the day, we don't want to be the reason. We don't want something that we say to be the reason that somebody feels ostracized or that right. somebody feels, you know, a. And it, it goes so far beyond, like, politically correct culture or, like, PC shit or any of that um, or, like, social justice warrioring or virtue signaling. It goes so far beyond that into just wanting to make sure that we're using our platform for a force for good, that we're bringing people together instead of separating people, bringing people apart, that we're, you know – acting as a force of unity and positivity in the grand scheme of things in the world as opposed to um, a force of discord. And I think I think you have a point there, that there is a there is a massive responsibility there. And it seems to me that this particular group is focused so narrowly on this one. I mean, they talk about this woman like she is the be-all, end-all. Um, it's focused so narrowly on her. And the only defining feature uh or defining guidance in the group is what she wants what she thinks this thought that she had you know she'll make a 20 minute youtube video about a thought that she had in the fucking shower and they're treating (laughs) it as though it is you know the the word of god and that to me is problematic um yeah 
I don't necessarily, you know, some of the tenets, the fact that reality is not static, I don't have an issue with that. I don't have an argument with that. I'm all into the whole energy thing. And I do think that, you know, intentions, I I could not deal with magic in any sense if I didn't necessarily believe that. If I didn't believe inherently that we have some ability to affect change on our reality. Um, I believe that both in my personal spiritual life and also in my professional life, um, in working with people from a, from a, you know, and being a mental health advocate and working with people in that sense. Um, so I, I do believe that we have ultimate control over our reality. Um, but I just don't, I don't jive with the darker aspects of, what it is that she's talking about. And I certainly don't jive with the sort of lackadaisical way she just throws the the concept of a reset button into a discussion that is already heavily centered around depression, mental illness, and things of that nature, suicidal thoughts. Right. Um, to me, that's just ridiculously irresponsible. So at best, misguided and irresponsible. At worst... An alleged cult. I just, she's got a weird chin. Yeah, that's, there's that. I don't, I don't want to say weird. I'm not body I don't want to say anybody. weird. No, no, no. All right, let me I take mean, that back. I mean, she's a really attractive I don't woman. Say that weird. She's, a, she's an attractive she's got a very, looking woman. I see why people follow her. She's got I get a very it. handsome chin. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of into that, chin. though. So it's not. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's the eyes. It's weird. Yeah, it's, she's got she, she something. She definitely got the Marshall Applewhite eyes. And she, it's something. They they just look dead. Like, yeah. they, they look at me like. They just, even when she's smiling, they just yeah. look flat flat and dead. And that is yeah. the key for me. That is the red yeah. flag. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> well, we are done talking about it. We've gone way over. Hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of extra long episode this week. Mm-hmm. That extra long one for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, we, I want to know what you think. I want to hear what you think. Yeah. So shout us out on Twitter at the Haunted Heart. Um, shout us out on Instagram at the Haunted Heart Podcast. Email us at the Haunted Heart Podcast at gmail dot com. Um, let us know what you think. Do you think this group is a cult, an alleged cult? Do you think this? Uh, do you think it's a harmless group? Do you think it's kind of just this? Would you not elevate it to cult status? I want to know like what your vibe is. I want to know what you think about this um, whole thing. And yeah. definitely, definitely, definitely want to hear from you. One great place to discuss things um, is that I did not mention is our closed Facebook group. Um, you can find it by searching for the Haunted Heart Podcast on Facebook. Um, you will see our like Facebook page, which if you'll go ahead and give us a like there, and you can also review us on our Facebook page. Um then you can kind of like get all the news and updates and posts there. But the real parties happening in the closed Facebook group. Um, if you request to, we keep it closed for your privacy because we don't want no, it's it's our group. It's ours. We want to keep it separate from your friends and family. Yes. You know, because it's our tribe. It's our alleged <laughs> tribe. Yes. But uh, we just keep it private for your privacy. Um to protect you because you might not want everybody on your friends list, you know, seeing that you're part of this group and seeing all the shit that's going down. So, I mean, it's not anything bad, but whatever. It's like, wait, that sounds like, yeah, right. That it sounds, sounds really awful. sketchy. I was like, what? No. But all the shit that's going down in this But you group. might not want your great aunt Sally to know that you're part of a horror true crime podcast group for discussion. And for that reason, we keep it private. If you request to join either Kenny, myself, or a member of the Murder Rod Squad, we'll approve you. And then you can get to discussing. I want to see that discuss discussion. Discussion. Um, do not slack off on me. I want to know what you think. I'm dying to hear your thoughts on this. So please, uh, yeah, let me know. Yeah. She, literally, she's dying right now. We all are, aren't we? (laughs) Yes. In the grand scheme Uh, of things. Every second of every day. Anyway, if you want to... (laughs) 
<laughs> if you want to support the show, if you think we're doing a good job and you want uh, bonus content and you want to help us keep the show around and running, we would certainly appreciate you leaving a little coin on the dresser. You can do that on patreon.com slash the haunted hearts. Um, if you join, you will get an invocation to the family uh, and you will also get the perks that come along with the tier that you have selected. So definitely check that out. Um, and yeah. I think that's I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's pretty much Did it. Did I hit it all? I think you hit every single nail on the head. Fabulous. Perfect. Fabulous. You just buckled it right up in, in a little in a little bag and you I stuffed did. it in the suitcase and you shoved I, it under the bed until next week. I absolutely did. And I'm sure by now that you can hear the thunder rolling in the background and so I think that that's nature's way of telling us uh you've been going too fucking long shut the fuck up (laughs) so while the thunder is rolling and you know the monsters are creeping out from under your bed and you're listening to the calm voice of myself who is definitely not an alleged cult leader not an alleged cult leader but always always stay smooth